my own experience with the site itself what dates back to the early mid 1990s where Jim Adavazio and a colleague of his uh, now retired Jack Donahue who worked was a geologist at the University of Pittsburgh uh, collaborated together uh, during the excavation of the site and Jack asked me to come and uh, use a certain technique that I've been doing the last 10 or 15 years called soil micromorphology I'll explain that in a second and try to apply that to analyze the sediments at Meadowcroft and evaluate some of these claims for contamination and what's the integrity of the archaeological material and the integrity of the geological material as well. Is is the stuff been moved or trampled or modified by post-depositional changes of dripping water or uh, contamination by uh, coal and other organic material that's inside the coming from the bedrock? So I agreed, of course. Didn't want to pass the opportunity to see and work at Meadowcroft, which at the time. Uh, excavations in, in the mid-90s had ceased, but the site was very well protected. Uh, now it's apparently been very well protected, and, it, and it's open to the public for visits, um, and people can go visit it uh, now, maybe in the fall or something, or one of these years they'll get a chance to see the, the new excavations or the new preparations for everything. Anyway, I, in any case, I went there, and uh, my, the strategy that I used is soil micromorphology, and employs the sampling of into in situ intact blocks of the sediment and the soils around the site and the rocks themselves, whereby we, if we can remove a block of the sediment and preserve it somehow, however we encase it in plaster or something like that, and take it back to the laboratory, we can then dry it out and embed it with uh, polyester resin, sort of boat resin kind of material, harden the block up and then saw it and treat it like a rock and then make what we call a petrographic thin section out of this sediment. And the, the technique in geology has been around for 150 years already, but the application of these thin sections in soil micromorphology to archaeology has only been around for, let's say, the last 30 years, really, even less. Um, and so this was a chance to sort of apply this technique, look at these intact deposits, and see if we can detect how the deposits got there and if there are any post depositional changes, modifications that would produce these seemingly old dates and, uh, and that way contribute to the sort of laying to rest or trying to finalize where Metacroft Rock Shelter fits into to the geological setting at the site and at a more larger level, let's say, uh, whether uh, how it contributes to the peopling of the new world. Because if, if the dates do turn out to be that old, 13, 16,000, then uh, it clearly means that people came from the, the West, probably from the West someplace, long before Clovis dates, which are uh, significantly young, a few thousand years younger than that. So the after collecting the samples and going back to the micropology laboratory at Boston University where I normally work, um, we analyzed these thin sections and we can see anything on the order of, of uh, contamination or any reason to suggest why this material, uh, the, the sediment should not yield and the materials that they pulled out of the sediment should yield anything that's not uh, accurate dates. And uh, at the same time, we couldn't see any evidence for secondary um, organic matter that would have been leached from the coal in the bedrock that would have contaminated the sediment. So based on our analyses, and um, at the, which Adivasio very nicely cites in his book, he, he thought that this basically put the lid on the, the topic. Um, and that's basically where it is right now, as far as I know. I, I, there are probably still people who don't believe in it, and never will. I personally don't care when people c came to the New World, but we just want, as scientists, we want to make sure we have the evidence right and that uh, we can justify any conclusions and interpretations we make based on sound data that we have, and that's collected in an impartial way.